you from South Florida, it's, it's different. We're a different breed. Like, we're a different breed from people. The athlete from South Florida has been through it all. Since it's sunny, hot, nearly year-round, you're always doing something and you can get better. You don't ever have to stop. We kind of got that, like that swag already. When I first started playing football, I was probably about, probably like four. I mean, like playing in the streets. Probably I was young, like real young. But I, I didn't start playing like organized football until like the second grade. I, I'm, I'm not sure how old I was like, around that time. I mean, I don't really think I wanted to play. Like my dad just like, he, he sent me to the park because I play football like around the house a lot. And like with my cousins all the time in the street. So he was like, you know, I might as well just take them to like an organized park. And I agreed with it, so it was basically, like I said, I wanted to play. My teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I was in like the second, the first grade. I was like a football player. So I already knew what I wanted to be. I actually started running track in ninth grade. I was always fast, so I always was running against people and all that. So I always was interested in track. It's just my mom didn't have the money for me to go into like track um, teams and all that stuff. So I just always was active. I began in middle school, sixth grade. I was six years old when I started playing football. Yo, so we're here at Florida City Razorback, the park, Florida City Park. Um, one of the stumbling grounds that really made me the man who I am, who I became today. And um, I'm just ready to come back and give back to the community. You can see we didn't really have much, you know, compared to other parks. I've been playing, I've been playing, I started playing here at six years old, and it's like really my like home right here, you know? Every, every week, every year I come back, feel like a celebrity, mini celebrity here, you know? Got the big tower, water tower right there. You know, it ain't really much, you see, you can see the grass and stuff, how other parts, they got probably got turf and stuff. We, it's what we made at, that's what most of the kids who come here, they really make it out because they know how to be humble, they know what it takes to, to make it to the next level or to, to make that next step. So yeah, and I feel like I really did it, like I made it out. Don't. Yo. Six. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Chillin'. Yeah, yeah. It's my little brother, Kenny. Call him Po Boy, AKA Po Boy. Grew up with him. I mean, it's been a lot of difficult. I mean, the main thing is the struggle is one though, like one difficulty, like just like not knowing like where your next meal coming from and stuff like that. And then just being in like a household with just like your mom, like with no dad around and then all these kids. I mean, you never know, like some days your lights be off, the water be off. Eviction, everything. I went through a pretty rough childhood. I mean, my mom, she didn't always like, she didn't always have like much, my parents, but as I got older, things got better. Like, you know, just, just working hard, you know, and just providing for us. Since my mom divorced my dad when we were like three months, uh, it was just us and her. And then we didn't have a house for like three years. We were like living with my grandma, then we lived with my aunt. And then my mom finally got us a house um, in Richmond Heights. And then we stayed there for a while, and then my mom got a really good job. She was doing good for herself, got out of debt and all that, and then she said she wanted a bigger house, so we moved to um, Goose, and now we're in like a really good house now. We definitely had a big upgrade from Rachel Heights to here. I'm glad we moved. At first I didn't want to, but I'm glad to. Want to, man. It's my second mama, man. Hi. I'm trying to tell you. 
and, and the mom is on the phone. Let me call you back, team. Ma, I love you. One change I wish I did, wish my dad was there, was there more. Because, like, um, I mean, I know I got my older brothers, but, like, it's nothing like having your dad around. And like, it's been, like, tough for me, like. Where's your dad? Uh, he lives in Georgia. Damn. He lives in Georgia right now, but, I mean, it's, it's kind of, like, tough not knowing, like, you can't, like, call, like, a father figure, like I mean, I look at my oldest, my oldest older brother as my father figure, cause I mean he been there since I was since I came out, and like I mean I really say like he want taught me like the game and stuff, and like how to really excel. I faced a lot of difficulties. Um, I had a child when I was fifteen. I had a son in September 21st, 2008. After I had him, um, my life got more difficult. Um, like my family wasn't supportive at all. Um, that's at, at that point, um, a lot of my family members wanted me to stop running track and focus on getting a job and different stuff like that. So I was pretty much alone in that aspect. After I came out of the hospital, I moved in with my aunt because my mom, she was, she went on drugs and so I moved with my auntie and um, then she was moving about a couple of months later and I had to move out of her place. Then I moved with my, um, back with my mom and she got a place, I don't know how, but she got another place and then we got evicted again after about a year. And I think I posted something on Facebook. So a family friend, friend reached out to me and I ended up moving with her. I call her my aunt. I ended up moving with her, and she was she then was very supportive of me. I was in I was a sophomore in high school. She was very supportive. She was she she wanted to do anything that she could for me to get this track scholarship. So she was pretty much a family member to me, and she stuck with me throughout the rest of my high school career. I would say my junior year of high school. Um, I got a new track coach and he kind of instilled, he, he made me notice how, how I could potentially get a track scholarship. Everybody else looked down upon me like they thought I was going to fall into the stereotype of teen moms giving up on their life and all that. So, so there, there, those were the two that stood by me. They continued to tell me that I'm above the rest and different stuff like that. I did reach a lot of breaking points, mental issues, a lot. I know that there was no other way that I could do it. I knew that track was my way out, and I was determined to not stop that because I was pretty talented, and I wanted to continue. Jamaica Glades out of Dillard. It's actually Jamaica Glades that's going to come off the final turn with the lead. Kamani, Austin, Reese, and Whitaker with plenty of work to do. Looking really good. Jamaica Glades out of Dillard. Only two more hurdles to navigate. I didn't hit perfect times until my senior year. So a lot of people started reaching out to me my senior year, I would say around February. February, March, that's when UM came to me. 11th grade, like literally as soon as like 11th grade um, season ended, because that's when they can talk to you kind of, is when she was calling. They sent me like little like, like um, little letters. They came out and watched me practice. You know, call you all the time. They was aggravating. I ain't gonna lie, like Miami was, they was aggravating. They showed me like posters and stuff, for, like other players, and like saying like this can be you on the poster. I mean, I enjoyed it though. I, I never really let it get in my head or nothing like that. I was always like humble about it. I had a track meet, and the day after that, she came to my house and she offered the full scholarship and I came on an unofficial visit. So I took the offer right then and there. All right, the number one cornerback in this class, the number 18 player in the ESPNU 150, Tracy Howard. Go ahead and let us know where you will play your college football. Hey, Mom. <laughs> Everybody be patient. <laughs> My best friend right here. I will be spending the next three to four years 
further in my education and my athletic ability at the University of Miami. When I first came to the track and I saw all the, the team with their uniforms on, like with their orange tights, I was like, this is crazy, Shannon. Like you're really like on a visit to go to college for running track. And it was amazing, like how the whole, and then how like I walked around campus, how the rat was like by the water. I liked what Coach Dean was telling me. Like, this is a family, this is tradition, and I liked everything that she was saying. And she, she was right, it is a family and it's tradition. My dreams were to stay local because I had a son. I wanted to stay local, but I also wanted to have a um, productive season, and I also wanted to come to a big school, the name. UM had a pretty good, big name around my town. I mean, I stay home, I mean, first of all, because family, that's one reason, I, that's probably the main reason I stay home, because I had things at home that I feel like I should, you know, stay home, and I mean, I basically had like, you know, I weigh all my options, and like, staying home was a big thing, because I didn't want to leave my mom, you know, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to go to Miami. At the end of the day, I mean, I played in Miami all my life, so I figured like, I mean, it'd be the same thing, like, they could all come to my games all the time, you know, it'd be just like old times. Like, I played high school in Miami. I played Little League in Miami. Like, I already changed. I mean, I know I could have left and got away, but... And plus, Miami was a great university. And plus, my best friend came here, Malcolm. You know, so we, we were our best friend in high school. He came, so that's another, another influence that made me want to come. And plus, I knew a lot of people that came here. Like, I knew Dion already, I knew Duke. Cause all of us from Miami, so we, kinda, so we knew each other. I knew her. I all had played ball together like before, before, before college. So I was like, dang, I could go there with all them boys and we could like do something good. Like this university, it's not easy. Like at first, it's regarded as one of the top, you know, academic institutes. You know, one of the top in, in the country, like top 40. So it's not, a, it's not you not just gonna go in class and think you could just BS your way through. Like you really gotta study. You really gotta talk to your teachers and your professors. Like the test is not just cake. You know, unless you were just like a genius or something like that. I ain't no genius. You know what I'm saying? I gotta study, I gotta work for mine. I would say some days are more difficult than some. Um, track only takes up about about three hours a day. So with that being, with that, I just focus on that and only that at the time of practice and when we do weightlifting in the morning, I just focus on that. And then when it's time for school, I focus on that. It's pretty hard. Now coming like, looking at it by college, from college, um, just going to practice in the afternoon, I mean, in the morning time, and then like having class in the afternoon, and then knowing you have to study, then you have to get up for the next day for practice the next day. You got to approach your life also. You still want to make sure you enjoy yourself and you know, and things like that, but it, it could be tough. It definitely could be tough, but once you get older and like know how to do it, you'll be all right. It's just a job, basically. And that's, I feel like that's the mentality you need to go in with as well when you come to college like this is a job these people are getting paid off of me like understand that you need to work hard and some things are gonna happen if you're trying to do it on your own you trying to you ain't really leaning on nobody else guidance and help uh, you it, you're gonna struggle like it's not gonna be it's, it's hard to do like that's why you need like a mentor you need somebody like you need people in your corner like you need a lot of counselors you know not in counselors as in like Counselors, like counselors, but you need counselors and people like that's gonna help you, or people that you can lean on, or people that you go to go to for guidance. My my teammates now push me. Rather, where in high school I only had about, actually I was basically on my own. I mean, I feel like it all come from you know who you're around, like, and I feel like I'm around some good people. Like, I don't really hang around like knuckleheads, the people that do stuff like that don't pertain to football. Like. I struggled with that my freshman year. And um, it wasn't really working out too good. I mean, I was just like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. I used to call my mom every day, like, mom, I can't do this. Like, I really, I want to drop out. I want to come to school no more. Like, but she was like, you got to stick in there. And, like, but so I, I managed to like manage it and like know what's what. Like, when when time to play and like when time to work. My motivation on a daily basis 
It's my daughter. I don't want her to like live the same life that I live. Like, I mean, I didn't live a bad life, but it just I want her to like. I don't want her to want for anything. So that's why I go so, like I go hard. Like I'm so aggressive. With, like my son keeping this track scholarship, graduating, being the first in my family to graduate. Those three things keeps me motivated. I'm glad I came to the University of Miami. It's no university like Miami. Like. You get different cultures, experience new things, beautiful view. We're going to be one of the hardest working universities. I'm glad I came. I really, really am. There's so much opportunity here. At the end of the day, like, I, if people can say what they want. When they come to football, everybody wish they could play for the University of Miami. I don't care what they say. We could go 0 and 18. Like, this, this is special. Like, people don't understand, like, especially the football tradition. I know that's one thing like, I'm going to miss like, once I leave, like, run through the smoke. I know there's a tradition here. And like, it's, it's not gonna be like that, like when you go to like somewhere else or you go to the next level. You can go anywhere in the world and say something about University of Miami or fill out a job application saying you are, you got a degree from the University of Miami and everyone would know about that. Like so much connections. Uh, it's special like when you go to the league and you got like you brothers, we, like, we, it's a different type of like, I, it's a different type of mentality like, you know what I'm saying? It's just different. Like you can tell, like all the guys come back and work out all the time. Like I would say, come to University of Miami for the great tradition. We really invented swag, though. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's true. Like people, don't, it's, it's true. Like, like we really did. I mean, just wearing the logo, like the U logo on you. I mean, that's the most unique part. Like most, a lot of people like want to be in our shoes, but they can't. University of Miami really like a brotherhood. You really get that bond because like we do things together, like go out together and have, have fun, like bowling or shooting pool or something like that. You got like Alabama and LSU, but it ain't nothing like the judo. Like, it's, just, it's just different. It's like hard to explain, you know what I'm saying? You know how you feel like you're a different person? But like, Miami really different. Everybody is different. Everybody comes from different backgrounds, from different cultures. I feel like it's like, it represents kind of Miami because that's how Miami is. It's like its own little state in Florida. Like it's totally different from any other place in Florida. And I think that's how UM is. I feel like I know, I, I feel like I'm mentally stronger since I've been in college because a lot of things that I've like, been through. Like that, you know, you, 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 sometimes you ain't like, you come upon stuff that you would never really think that would happen. Cause you're like, dang, I like, you think you like everything just gonna be like a straight clean path like high school like high school was like easy like it was just like, I just ran through it and like I'm um, college and you think you're gonna run through college and be like bomb me in fair but it don't work like that when you get to certain levels like there's some stuff that you're gonna run into that you're gonna have to like fight through and get over so I feel like college definitely like presented like roadblocks for me like that I had to like get get over but it only made me a better person like it showed me like patience I could say I am very much more independent than I was in high school uh, I've grown tremendously. Like, I'm pretty. I'm. I'm proud of myself. Like, what I became. Like, I mean, like looking back. Like, looking at some of my friends. Like, I mean, they're still my friends. I still look at them like my brother. But I would. I rather. I rather fit this life that I'm in now than what they're doing. I want to be more than a football player. But that's what. I, that's something that I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to grow up. Like, and play in the National Football League. Like, that was one of my dreams. I mean, that's not what I want to be known as. Like, all my life, like as a football player, but. That's something that I want to do to start my life off with. Um, I want to do a nonprofit for single mothers. So, like, just to help them, like, if they need a place to stay, maybe put them in, like, a habitat home, or if they just need um, clothes or, like, stuff for their kids, that type of stuff. Because my mom was a single mom, and I just know how hard it definitely can be. So I just feel like people need more help. I want to just get my degree. <clears throat> And um, go to the league, go to the NFL for like a couple of years so I can get established, like get enough money so I can establish myself and then um, retire and become an FBI agent. Um, I want to get my CPA, um, possibly go into a small firm for a couple of years, move on to a big, to a big firm, possibly become a professor. I'm not sure about that yet. I want to do something for my community where I'm from, like to help the kids, you know, like, cause I mean, it's a lot of like, things that go on around there that I feel like could be better. Like, especially as I grew up, like it got real bad around there, like a lot of killings, a lot of violence. So like, I feel like if you're giving people something to do, especially the kids, I mean, it's hard for the kids not to have messed up minds like that, especially if they ain't got athletic talent. Like, I want to do something 
like the change, like the community. I know a lot of people try to change it, and a lot of people do try, but I don't know. I just want to do something like you know for the kids, you know, just, like help them, like have like a like a center, like a youth center, like like with like like spiritually, you know, they have like Bible study, you know, tell them about God, you know, they have like recreational activities and and also like tutoring, you know, and I, I want to be there too. I want to have like work. I want to have like people that there like working, but I also want to be there like for the kids. That's what I want to do, like after football. The athlete from South Florida has been through it all. We're a different breed. Like we're a different breed from people. We always have that grind. Everybody is doing something year round. We know like how it is. Like since we've been down here for so long, we play against like the top of the line schools and it's a different mentality. Like it's like a dog mentality. Like you don't fear nobody. You ain't scared of nobody. Less dependent on people and we kind of got that like that swag already. No matter who who you playing against, like. No matter how big they is, like it's, it's, it's like a, it's from the heart. Like since it's sunny, hot nearly year round, you're always doing something, and you can get better. You don't never have to stop. It's like we play with like a chip on our shoulders. Not not being cocky, but like more confident. Sometimes it is arrogant, but it's like that set of there's like a set of confidence that you got that like really like unmatched. Coming out of high school, you played top line schools. And then like just coming here and like you know what the talent, like how the talent is and like what to expect. When you're from South Florida, it's, it's different. That's why we're grinding 24-7.